And on behalf, of, on behalf of Bellevue, I would like to welcome you and thank you for being here in the room and also joining us online. We are delighted to have you. This is a long anticipated and prayed for day. So we are very delighted to be here. And I want you to know as the women come up, you're going to be exposed to some incredible women of God who are women of faith and God is using them mightily all around the world. We're not going to take time to introduce everybody. You will see on the screen their name and the ministry that they're associated with. We want to focus on the message, and that is to exalt Jesus Christ and to gather the women of the world together to pray. And as Carol Ward, who you will hear later, often says, we're asking God for a prayer movement, not a prayer meeting. You know, as women, we have so much in common. Regardless of culture or language, we have more in common than we have differences because we've been created by God, female. And all of us want to be the best we can. And yet there's so much confusion raging over what it means to be a woman. And women have worked hard to define what it means to be a woman and to find our place in society. In fact, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in the West, the cultural response was feminism, which has been defined as belief in and advocacy of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes, expressed especially through organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Now, some of what feminism has brought to women has been beneficial. I'm very grateful for the right to vote, to pursue higher education, for greater equality in employment and pay. But have we gone beyond trying to be equal with men and want to be men? Our fast-paced and modern world offers no accepted definition or vision for what it means to be a woman. So let's just ask ourselves, how are we doing? The women who have helped me most through the years are those who have celebrated being female and all the blessings and benefits we have in Christ. They've embraced all that God has for them as women, and yet many women are rebelling against God's design, leaving them frustrated, confused, and for many, angry. We've tried to throw off the perceived restraints of the past only to find increased stress, anxiety, and depression. Not only that, we're also more isolated and lonely than ever before. In fact, the New York Times in a recent article described a worldwide epidemic of loneliness. Consider these alarming statistics. Women are twice as likely to suffer from depression and anxiety as men. Approximately 12 million women in the United States alone suffer from clinical depression. In the past year, 23.4% of women experienced an anxiety disorder. That's from the National Institute for Mental Health. That is one-fourth of the female population. Could it be that seeking freedom, women have actually found a new form of bondage? Since the time mankind rebelled against God, recorded for us in Genesis 3, women have tended to compare and compete with each other. Social media has only heightened the comparison and competition for likes to the point that stress, anxiety, and depression are skyrocketing within Gen Z, those born between 1996 and 2012, giving them the highest anxiety and depression rates of any previous generation. Gene Twinge states, rates of teen depression and suicide have skyrocketed since 2011. It's not an exaggeration to describe iGen, or Gen Z, as being on the brink of the worst mental health crisis in decades. Much of this deterioration can be traced to their phones. Teens spend an average of seven hours and 22 minutes on their phones a day, and tweens ages eight to 12 are not far behind at four hours and 44 minutes daily. I mean, no wonder they're stressed and confused. The internet identifies 72 to 112 genders, and that was just the first page of my Google search. Marriage has been redefined for the first time in 4,000 years. More children are living in single-parent homes than ever before. Divorce is at an all-time high. Cohabitation has replaced marriage for many, and marriage rates have hit an all-time low. What is a young woman to think, and where is she to turn? Obviously, what we're doing is not working. Why is this important to me? Well, besides being a woman, I have three daughters and eight granddaughters. I want them to be confident about who it is God has created them to be and to fulfill his mission and purpose for their lives. I believe the essence of what we would like to accomplish is summed up in this quote 
by author Abigail Dodds. She says, I want women to be at peace as women, to be grateful for being made women, and to see it all as an essential part of Christ's mission and work. You're going to be introduced today to women who have embraced their God-given design and are being used by God to advance his kingdom around the world. They're fighting for justice and meeting needs to build a bridge for sharing the gospel. If you're a believer, you are in Christ. And his call to advance his kingdom and make disciples is for all of us. We must embrace who we are and whose we are. As women, we need to be aware of what's happening in our culture and develop tools to help women derive their worth and identity from their God-given image and position in Christ. We want to help you become a real woman. The definition for real, true, authentic, genuine, in accordance with fact and reality. In English, the four characteristics taken from Genesis 1 through 3 of a real woman actually form an acrostic for real. The R for a real woman is reflection. We are beautiful because we've been created in the image of God to reflect him as he has created us. In Genesis 1, 27 and 28, the Bible says, actually with 26, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God has written his story and his plan into all that he has created. There are two genders that reflect the grandeur of our creator. Our job is to display God in his fullness, and we can't do that if male and female are not working together the way God designed. It's a design to be embraced. We're not living for our own reflection. Our whole point in living is to display his glory, which creates within me the desire to submit to his design as a woman. So we're our, a reflection of the Lord as he has created us, female. But E is Eitzer. That happens to be the Hebrew word for helper. In Genesis 2, 18, the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. I believe we've done great disservice to this word because we have a tendency to think to be a helper is less than, that it's a weak word, but it is not a weak word. It's actually a military term. It means that we're a strong helper, a warrior. We are for those that God has given us to nurture and love and disciple. In fact, <clears throat> this word is used 21 times in the Old Testament and 16 times it is used for God as Israel's strong helper and protector. Romans 5 provides rich insight into God's redemptive plan through Jesus Christ. In fact, it tells us in verse 14 that Adam was a type of the one to come. We know in the Old Testament that we have a lot of physical pictures of spiritual realities that are revealed for us in the New Testament. Adam was the earthly father of all mankind, while Christ became the spiritual father of all who believe in him and are saved. By defeating sin and death, Jesus Christ crushed the head of the serpent, fulfilling God's promise in Genesis 3.15. If you study creation, you see that God is a God of order. Everything he does has significance. All of the Old Testament points to Jesus and to eternal realities. God created Adam first. He took Eve from his side. As the first Adam, all people proceed from him and the sin nature is traced back to him. We know that from the New Testament, that the first Adam is the one through whom that sin nature is passed down. So everyone, including Eve, had to come out of Adam. But why did God not make Eve exactly as he made Adam? You know, Jesus is called the second Adam. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Contemplating this as I was studying the book of Genesis and understanding that God is a God of order. 
looking at creation, that everything in creation has a counterpart. And as I looked at all that God did and understanding everything he did not only was intentional but was an eternal reality, I was sitting outside in my backyard saying, Lord, why? I don't understand why you took Eve out of Adam's side. I know it's significant. I know there are, there's a purpose there. I know it has something to do with the gospel. Would you just reveal to me what it is? And all of a sudden, I began to weep. As in my mind, I saw Christ on the cross with his side pierced and his blood flowing forth, purchasing his bride. We were purchased out of his side that we might be in him and that through Jesus Christ we might inherit the very righteousness of God through him. And the A is we are anointed. We are gifted and empowered by God to rule and subdue and serve his church. In Genesis 1, 27 through 28, it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In the New Testament, we're gifted by the Spirit and placed in the body of Christ just as he wills to rule and subdue and to advance his spiritual kingdom. So we're a reflection. We're an eight, sir. We are anointed and gifted, empowered to serve, but we are also life givers, both physically and spiritually. Genesis 3.20 said, Now the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. He named her Eve because God had given them a promise that one would be born from the seed of woman who would crush the head of the serpent, who would defeat him once and for all. It takes a man and a woman to procreate physically, and it takes both men and women to bring people to spiritual birth. We give life where the enemy of our souls seeks to destroy. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. We give life physically. We nurture and give life spiritually, but we can also give life through our words. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. We edify. We build up. We encourage because we are life givers. <clears throat> this is our reality for all of eternity because we are real, true, authentic followers of Jesus Christ, our King. Because we want all women to know their true identity and worth in Christ, we are making this 11-week study available this book is available on Amazon, but if you go to realwoman.com, you can also register and you can receive a link for a free ebook. All of you who registered and came today should have received your link for the free ebook. We want this tool for the church that was created by a team of women from different seasons and walks of life to be able to help women understand who they are as image bearers of God and to reflect Him as He has created us, female. The resources can be accessed at realwoman.com. And by the end of the study, we believe you will not only be able to define what it means to be a woman, but you'll have a clearer picture of how essential you are to Christ's mission and work. Real Woman is the counterpart to Better Man, which can be accessed at betterman.com. For those of you joining us and your primary language is not English, it is being translated into Spanish. And if we can assist you in translating it into your heart language, we would be more than happy to do that. You can also contact us through the website. As we work together and embrace God's good design, then and only then will we be united. The gospel of Jesus Christ, which portrays the love of God, is the only unifier of our broken and sin-torn world. God's love unites us. Real women and men Embracing God's good design and flourishing. We're excited now to join Yusha from Europe as she presents the needs of the women on her continent and leads us in a time of prayer. 